My name's Erica. And I'm Giancarlo. And this is our review of... Warband Against the Darkness. Now, doesn't that sound like a title for a uh, heavy metal... Uh, it like does. a pretty death metal-like song? Yeah. And, and you have a special title, don't you? <laughs> Can you do it? Uh, if you do it, I, I promise I will sing this song out death metal stuff. Okay, cool. Are you ready? talking about the pinwheel? Yeah, yeah, I'm talking okay. about the pinwheel. Okay. Is that what it's called, the pinwheel? Yeah. You ready? I drank a little bit yesterday, though, so... So, uh, th just don't puke on the game. Yeah, Or, okay. more importantly, me. Okay. <laughs> okay? All right, you ready for this? Is there enough room for all the hair that's gonna be... We're <laughs> back. Ready? Yeah. Oh. We're back! Against the darkness! In Warband, you'll all play as different unique races which have animosity against each other. Unfortunately, you'll all have to work together and make up the Warband to fight coming darkness. Or all will be lost. Of course, this doesn't mean you can't place the other races in the front lines to die while you live and reap the rewards of glory and war. Place the board in the middle of the table with the round tracker on the round number according to the number of players. For this three-player review, we'll place it on the seven. Place one of the brown meeple and two brown cubes in each of the light infantry, cavalry, and archery platoon as such on the warband roster. These brown pieces represent mercenaries. Each player will receive a player aid, an action board with matching cubes and meeples of that color, and three gold coins with the rest being placed in a reserve. Place the cubes so as to fill all the spaces of rank 2 and higher on your action board, with the remaining on the side. Each player will also randomly choose a race board and play it as such. These will grant each player unique abilities during the game. Find the three starting enemy cards with the green background and randomly place them face up starting with the leftmost space on the board. Shuffle the remainder and place it to the side. For your first game, you should use the brown title header, red dress cards, and place the white ones in the box. Shuffle these and create a deck. Shuffle the intel cards and form a deck as well. Randomly determine a starting player and going clockwise, start with him. Each player will place a cube on the leftmost territory and working their way inward. These represent scouts in the game. You're now ready for war. Each player turn consists of two phases, upgrading the action track, followed by taking three actions. The first phase simply means you'll get to upgrade one of the four actions available on your board by removing its leftmost cube and placing it in your reserve. Taking three actions is just that. You'll take any three actions you want from those available on the board. You can choose in whatever order you want to execute these and you can also choose to repeat any of them. For all actions you'll get to do, you'll get what's indicated in the leftmost unlocked box in that row. The actions are tax, train, scout, and fight. Tax simply means you'll get gold from the supply. Train allows you to train a certain number of men. For each shown in your rank, you can move that many one time each on the board, or move one that many number of times, or split the difference. To move a cube onto the lower lighter platoon on the warband board, it'll take up one of these points. Moving up one in rank will as well, but there is also a cost of one gold as shown here. After this action, it's possible, along with other mechanics in the game, that you'll have to transfer captainship. If a player has more men there than any other, he'll replace the captain with his own colored meeple to indicate the change. We'll talk about captainship soon. The scout action lets you place a certain number of cubes from your reserve onto areas on the board depending on how much gold you pay. You can't, however, place more than one cube on a territory during a scout action. Scouting are beneficial for many reasons, mainly for end scoring purposes and in fights. Here's how the fight action works. Bear with us, it's a long procedure. First, you need to make sure the warband's strength is high enough to even be allowed to take the fight action. To check that, total up all of the face-up enemy cards. You'll be fighting all of these. The middle icon will tell you the type of platoon you need, and the VP value will tell you the minimum needed in the warband. It doesn't need to be your units there alone, but a total of all units there. Higher ranks in fight will lower the enemy requirement. Next, you'll need to pay the captain's wages. You must give one gold to every opponent captain present, including mercenary captains, in the warband roster. Again, higher ranks in fight will save you some money. If the captains can't be paid, you can't take the fight actions. Next, you'll defeat the enemy. Out of the three revealed enemy cards, you'll choose one and take it along with any gold coins on it should there be any. You'll also draw two intel cards and keep one face down and discard the other. These will be used for victory points in the endgame scoring. 
Sending units to Medica works as thus. If an enemy unit is worth more than 2 VPs, some units from your reserve, as depicted here, will go into the Medica box. However, for each scout you have in or in the adjacent territory you took the enemy card from, you'll lower the units sent to the Medica box. A player may heal a unit at any time during this turn by paying 2 gold and moving it to his reserve. Okay, the next step in the fight action is assigning casualties. The defeated enemy card will show a platoon type and how many units from it must be removed. Start at the lower levels of the warband and work your way up. Also, the targeted units will be all of the same race as the captain there. Should you take even more casualty and he has no units there, the captain decides which race bites the dust. Scouts, again, can save some, but in a different manner. Each scout in or in the adjacent territory as the enemy fought can pay one gold to save one casualty. New captains might be promoted after casualties to the player who has the most units in that platoon. Redress cards will be awarded to any player who suffered casualties. They'll receive one card which can give a special effect or be traded in for units or gold. We then move on to saluting war heroes. The player controlling the captain of the honor guard sends one to the war hero space. That unit remains there for the remainder of the game but will award 2 VP at the end scoring. The two remaining enemy units will raid and pillage. Simply take a gold coin and place it on the card. Lastly, you'll draw a new enemy card and place it in the territory that was empty before the fight began. When all players have taken a turn, simply move the round marker down. Notice that scouting gets more expensive in the last two rounds, so plan accordingly. When the last round finishes, we go to scoring. First players will total up VPs on the enemy cards they own and mark them in the booklet. Next, each unit in the War Heroes will award that player 2 VPs. The last captain standing will earn their players 1 VP each. Scout units and War Heroes on the board will each convert 3 gold into 1 VP. Excess gold is worth none. The player with the most scouts in a territory gains the VP there. For each realm card the player has, he'll multiply it by the number of scouts he has there to a maximum of 12 VPs. Total up the score and the player with the most will get their race praised in the history books and glorified in bard songs and be proclaimed winner. Finally, an innovative game we got here. I love the whole theme of having to work together begrudgingly without the game forcing a semi-co-op mechanic that sometimes feels contrived and clunky. And I love the artwork. Finally, a Euro game that has that Ameritrash look to it. But I'm only going to give a half pro point here. Why? Because I wanted more of the artwork to be represented in the enemy card. I mean, you only get this great artwork from the race cards and the box cover. Seriously, guys, come out with a slightly bigger enemy card with awesome artwork on them. It's only like 24 for like five, ten dollars, and I'll be the first to buy it. Now let's talk gameplay. Warband is full of short-term tactical choice, while your race can guide you into a long-term strategy as well. Do you concentrate on scouting, being captain of the warband, or amassing lots of money to buy others to fight for you? And yes, the races are not well balanced, as some are better than others, but only slightly so, so only a half point penalty. I think a bigger imbalance is actually player order. Most games we played had the first player at a disadvantage. This one, again, is not detrimental, but needs to be looked at. In the last round, the last player has a huge advantage, usually placing his scouts with no repercussions and bumping off any other player for the lead there, and killing other players' meeples in the warband to then become captain. And sure, they'd get redress cards. Unfortunately, these are utterly useless in the last round if your turn has already passed, since they can only be played on your turn. Maybe there should have been a last hurrah phase or something, where players can play their redress cards. Not sure, gonna have to try that out. And yes, the first player does get some advantages, like having a scout placed in the 4vp spot, and having first go at being in the warband, but again the disadvantages in the final round outweigh this. Lastly, another small hiccup worth only a half point penalty is that warband doesn't scale as well at either 2 or 5 players. The magic number for this game is mostly 4 and then 3. 5 is just too chaotic and 2 doesn't offer many surprises in terms of other player actions. But besides these cons, we've enjoyed the game quite a bit. Play interaction in terms of gameplay is high and you're always invested in the game and with loads of races to choose from with an expansion already out called Emerging Races, Warband gets a solid 8 out of 10.